Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are looking at Urban Decay Velvetizer Translucent Mix in Medium. I've had this for well over a week now and I don't know what the makeup equivalent is to money burning a hole in your pocket, but that's what was happening. I feel like I'm about to run late for work, but I really, really wanted to get this filming in this morning because I'm dying to look at this. I have been just dying to film and for some reason, every time I was getting ready to film, it seemed like my room was always taken up. So yes, I am in a different room today. I'm hoping you guys like this somewhat because I'm thinking it might be a good alternative for me. So I was trying to get a location where you guys could see Luke because I know a lot of you like to see my dog in my videos. But um, anyway, this is my guest room. I'm kind of trying to cover up this chair back here that doesn't match. So I'm not quite centered, <laughs> but um, I can hold up product over here and then you can see Luke. So hopefully it'll work out. That was a lot of words for the intro. Let's just get into the Velvetizer. It seems to be out of stock everywhere. I'm gonna put several links below, so hopefully you can check back in and see if it's in stock. It retails for $34, 4.28 ounces of this powder. It is an ultra fine mix-in powder that gives foundation an extra velvety feel, a beautiful matte finish and added coverage. You instantly get velvety foundation texture and you mix a dime size amount of this product into Naked Skin or Naked Skin One and Done for an extra velvety feel, a matte finish, and more coverage. It makes it easy to instantly transform your complexion whenever you want without disturbing the color in your other products, and it gives a silky airbrushed finish. It says it has an ultra fine, addictively radiant feel. It provides a smooth, soft focus effect for your most perfect complexion and it doubles as a finishing powder when used alone to set your makeup for a flawless finish doesn't have oil alcohol or fragrance so that's pretty much it and this is what the jar looks like i really don't like this velvet around the side i will say that right now because i feel like it is going to get dirty really really quickly and this is the inside it is a very very finely milled powder I have it on right now on the right side of my face and I did this like a foundation road test because I feel like it does um, transform foundation. I'm using it with Urban Decay One and Done today. Like I said, on the right side of my face, but my purpose of this foundation road test is to see if it transforms Urban Decay One and Done into a longer wearing foundation, a more matte foundation, but I wanted to see if you could do this with any powder and not just the Velvetizer. So on the left side of my face, I'm also wearing Urban Decay One and Done, but with the Well People Bio Brightener Invisible Powder, which I also recently got. And it is also a finely milled powder, which you really can't see from this, but it did just fly out of the container. I don't know if you saw that, but this is them on my face right now, and we can get into the application. Okay, there we go, and there it is. So I'm not quite sure how this is gonna work. I am gonna use this with my one and done Naked Skin. I have a review on this if you wanna check it out. It's one of my earlier ones, and um, it's kind of stiff, I'll put it that way, but I don't know. You can go check it out if you want to. But I felt like this was a good one to use because it is kind of sheer lightweight and liquidy and it can get a little shiny on the skin. I do have my skincare and primer already on my face. My, what am I wearing today? My Hourglass Veil primer that I wear a lot because it does tend to make foundation stay a while and help keep the skin relatively matte as long as possible. Um, clearly, I have a professional palette going on, but that is the way I roll. Um, you know, a candle lid works well, a plate works well. I'm not sure how to scoop this out to get a dime size amount. I guess I'm just gonna estimate it. Um, so, let's see. This doesn't feel right. I'll just start with about that amount and mix it in and see how that goes. I'm trying to do that on camera. 
And I'm doing this just with the end of a brush. And it does make it a little bit thicker. I'm gonna have to do this off camera because I really can't see. Okay, so I felt like that was about a dime size amount and that is what it turned into. And I'm going to apply this with a beauty blender to the right side of my face. Um, I don't have a clip in this room, so I'm just gonna have to flip my hair. Um, and you know, I usually just dip it and apply. So it's... Okay, so yeah, absolutely off the bat, it's going on thicker. And it does seem to be giving a little bit more coverage than it normally does. Like you can see how thick that made the foundation. I hope I have enough here. So I find this interesting because it made the foundation thicker. It kind of took away some of that demi matte sheen of the foundation and turned it into a more matte foundation. Um, so if you look from one side of my face to the other, obviously you can see it took away the redness, which is just normal for the foundation. I don't know, you can just see it gave kind of a blurred effect and I'll still need concealer because it's just not a full coverage foundation, but it looks really nice. I'm anxious to see how it looks when it is used as a finishing powder after I do my concealer. So I'm going to use the other powder and see how that works. So on this side, I'm going to use the Well People Bio Brightener Invisible Powder because it's also very finely milled. And I just recently got this too. So I want to know if you can do this with any powder or if you need to get the velvetizer. I'm trying to remove the sticker too. So I'm going to take a couple pumps again onto my lid and take the powder. It's kind of a difficult process. Okay, I've got it mixed in. It's all nice and messy. I even have some on my finger where I had it on the end of the brush. And I'm going to use just the side of my beauty blender this time so that I don't cross contaminate. And we'll get going. If you can see, this is the Urban Decay side, and this is the Well People side. I think they look good. I'm going to finish concealing and doing all that, and then I'll set with both, and we'll see how they wear throughout the day. So I just concealed with my Bare Minerals Serum Concealer, and I'm going to set this eye with the Velvetizer and a damp sponge, and I'm just going to dip it. It is very fine. I um, hope this goes okay. Wow, this is fine. Um, I'm not sure if I like this for setting under my eyes, to be honest. I mean, I don't know. I think it may work, but I feel like it doesn't really brighten or anything under the eye, so mm, that's just okay. Um, I'm going to put... A little bit more in there and set my face with my sponge, how I do. Um, again, it's pretty fine. So normally I would do this, but you can't really even tell it's going on the skin because it's just so fine. I mean, it's going somewhere. It's like, I can't even describe the texture of this. I can tell it's going in the skin um, and not just into the sponge. I'm just kind of dusting away the excess with this because this is the brush that I have on hand in here. I'm going to take the other side of my sponge and set with my Well People powder and I actually might be liking that side a little better, which is not what I expected. Okay. This is also very fine, but I feel like I'm getting more of a brightening effect with the Well People than I do with the Velvetizer under the eye. I 
I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, there is powder everywhere in this room. Okay, and then after I set this, I am probably not going to be able to come back with my finished makeup look. I'm just gonna have to talk to you guys um, when I check in. I'm running kind of late this morning and uh, it's just, it's, it's one of those mornings. I just, I really, really wanted to film this because I've been dying to try that Velvetizer and the Well People. People. And this is not necessarily how I wanted to try the Well People, um, and I'll be, of course, using that again in a regular way, but um, I just had to rip them both open. Okay, let's just dust that excess away. Obviously, normally I would use a bigger powder brush than this. This is what we're looking at. This is the Well People side, and I do feel like, you know, I have a little peach fuzz going over here and you can kind of see that a little bit especially over here on my nose I don't know if I just put on a little bit too fa much foundation over here on my nose on the velvetizer side but it's not looking too good so um, I'm just gonna finish my makeup a lot of times that stuff gets worked out when you finish your makeup so I'm gonna finish that okay so I know I said that I was not coming back or I didn't think I was gonna be able to come back with my makeup on but I'm back and um, this is the Urban Decay Velvetizer side, and this is the Well People side. I really don't think I can see a difference. Can you? I'm gonna decrease this brightness a little bit. Okay, sometimes I feel like when you decrease the brightness, you can see a little bit. Just so you guys know, I never use filters ever. Um, my camera doesn't even have them. I don't think Canon's even have the capability of having filter. I know that's an issue with Sony cameras, but um, I use two big old windows as natural light and I have a ring light just so I don't get shadows and the colors accurate. That's it. That's all I ever, ever use in my videos. So, so this is the Urban Decay one and done with Velvetizer and the Well People. And honestly, I don't think I can tell a difference right now. Um, Urban Decay well people so i do think i think i have a little mascara but i do think that the well people looks a little bit brighter under the eye tell me if i'm crazy that is the side um but i'm just gonna see how these wear throughout the day i'm happy with it um they seem to be really matte but not flat my skin looks good they both feel weightless which Urban Decay One and Done does anyway. It feels really good on the skin. So, um, so yeah, let's get on with this day. Hey guys, I'm just checking in really quickly. It has been over four hours. I feel like on a normal day with One and Done, I definitely, definitely would have had to blot by now. Like, probably by the three hour mark. Um, this is the Urban Decay side. This is the Well People side. I'm not really seeing a whole lot of difference. I'm seeing a little bit of glow, but I really don't feel like I need to touch up right now. I'm gonna try and get a little closer. So here's both sides. I think the under eye area is looking good. I think it's looking good pretty much overall. And um, yeah, I am very, very happy with both sides. Hey guys, I am doing an eight hour check-in which technically this could be the end of the video, period. Yes, I saw Brooke back there. Um, <laughs> so I actually did ask her what she thought about the differences between the two sides, and she said she really didn't see any. She did think that this side, which is the velvetizer side, looked a little creasier under the eyes, which I kind of said in the beginning. And they looked pretty much the same on the skin, but she also said that they looked good. And I did do my check-ins, which you guys already saw. And um, one thing that I didn't note is that they both feel really light and nice to the touch. Nothing feels heavy. I just don't see anything remarkable, which is good. I don't know. I think for eight hours of wear to only blot once, that's pretty darn good, especially for the foundation that I use this with. So I'll check in in a little while. Nice legs. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll see you in a bit. It's the end of the day. It's been a little over 11 hours, and I think it's safe to say that's enough time to decide 
how the velvetizer works, how another powder works with this mix-in technique. So in a nutshell, I feel like the velvetizer itself is a very, very fine powder. It's really hard to even describe exactly how fine it is. It can be messy, so this is not something that I personally am going to do every single day. It just takes a little bit of time. Like I said, it's messy, whether you're gonna do it with the velvetizer or any powder. I personally did not like the velvetizer under my eyes. I felt like it made my under eye texture look a little less bright than the well people side. And that was evident when I asked Brooke what she thought when I got home and she came to that conclusion all on her own. So I personally would use a different powder underneath my eyes to set my concealer if I'm using the velvetizer. It does make your foundation a little bit thicker, but it doesn't make it hard to work with. So I really enjoy that. For me, this is something that I would use on a day when I needed my foundation to go the extra mile without having to blot, or if I have just a thinner foundation that I want a little bit of extra coverage with, or that makes me a little shiny earlier than I like, or for special occasions where I just wanna look a little bit more flawless. Because when I showed the application right after I was finished, I felt like it looked okay. You could see some texture to it, but after I had all my makeup on, it really looked good. Uh, flawless, almost. So I feel like it really makes the rest of your makeup go on so beautifully, and your makeup just look gorgeous. It gives your makeup a matte finish, but without looking heavy or cakey or flat, which is really nice because even a lot of full coverage and matte foundations can make you look flat. They don't all do that, but they can. Now, do I think it's necessary that you have the velvetizer itself to do this technique with? All day long, I kept looking at each side and I really don't think from today's experience that you necessarily need the velvetizer to do this technique. I would say that if you're considering buying the velvetizer, maybe try it with a very fine translucent powder that you already own to see if it does work for you. I really liked it with a Well People powder. I could not tell a single difference between sides at all. Other than the fact that I like the way the Well People powder set my under eye concealer better than the velvetizer. So it would be worth experimenting a little bit before you spent your money on the velvetizer. It's a great powder, but I think you can maybe try doing it with something you own as well. Now, it is also a great setting powder, so if you're looking for a great setting powder, try it out. It is a beautiful finely milled powder. So those are my thoughts on the velvetizer. Do I think it's absolutely necessary? If you have a fine translucent powder that you use already, use it, but if you're curious about it, it might be worth picking up. I did enjoy the way it looked on my skin today, but I also enjoyed the Well People powder as well. So I hope you enjoyed this alternative version of this foundation road test, even though it wasn't quite a foundation it was still changing foundation in some way. So thank you so much for joining me. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. If you are not following me on my social media, I am very active on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter. I'll put those on the screen and down below. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.